Well, hello everybody and welcome to our SELT, formerly the PBS video, for week six, term three. Now this week we're going to look again at bystanders and um, do some activities around that. Um, we didn't have a video last week, uh, I was away and couldn't get one done, but we're back again this week with a vengeance. So, straight into it, we had um, 15 classes send up information about um, what positive bystanders are. Now before we get into that, let's refresh our memory about what negative bystanders or hurtful bystanders, the diff four different categories there may be. So I want you just to take 20 seconds, 30 seconds with your class and just discuss, see if you can remember the four different types of hurtful or unhelpful bystanders. Pause the video. Okay, Have so you go. remember there were four different types of by hurtful bystanders. Um, the first one was the instigator. They're the people that give that bully a, a push at the beginning to start the bullying right back where it starts. The second type are the encouragers. They're the people that you know join in by laughing, cheering, making comments, going fight, 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 gathering around and, and cheering on the bully to do their worst. They're the encouragers. The others are called the joiners. They're, they're, they join in the bullying at some stage. So they might not start it, but they join in somewhere along the line. And the fourth type, and probably the most common type, are the acceptors. They're the people that just stand around and watch, don't do anything to stop it, don't do anything really um, overtly to, to continue it, but they just stand there and watch, but don't help to stop the actual bullying. So they're the four different types. Hopefully you're able to get those all down. So the more I know about bullying, the more I know about bystanders, the more I think that this is really the only major way. I mean, we can put people in detention, diversion, suspension, and all that sort of stuff, but does it work? Does it really stop the bullying um, long term? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. For me, I think the key is having more and more people become positive bystanders because if we're all positive bystanders what's the bullying going what's the bully going to do when there's 20 or 30 of you all there saying stop it leave that person alone that bully's going to go away and leave that person alone so the more i know about positive bystanders the more powerful i think it is all right so the activity for today we're going to have a look at what's called an acrostic poem very quickly that's where you put the word bystanders vertically down your page B-Y-S-T-A-N-D-E-R-S. Yes, I had to look at that to check the spelling. And you have one line per letter. So, for example, B, you might have the first line could be B, a positive bystander today. The second line could be, for the Y, could be um, you can do it, or yes, you can. So we have a short poem, four or five, six, seven words on each line. It's called an acrostic poem. Now, I'd love to see some of these up on with me. I'd love to put them up um, around my office on the notice board so that people can have a look at them as they're up having some time out of my office. And I'd love to see some up around your room because the only way, as I said, that I think we're going to stop this long term and reduce bullying at our school is to all, or most of us, become positive bystanders and get away from being a hurtful bystander and in particularly encouraging that bully or instigating that bullying to start. Okay guys, pause the video, have a go at the so acrostic poem. 15 classes sure. send in um, how they can be positive bystanders and I'll put those together in a chart. You'll get this chart in your classroom very shortly once we get our photocopy fixed. Um, some of the things you came up with and it'll flash up on your screen shortly. Take the victim away from the bully and play with them. I take the victim away from the situation. Uh, tell the bully it's not okay to treat someone like this. Use your words, nice words, and not your fists. Find a safe place for the victim to be and to play. Get help. Stand with the victim and stand up for his or her rights. Tell a teacher, the deputy principal. Support the victim in numbers with your friends. If there's 10 of you saying stop, don't do it, the bully will most likely listen. Take the victim and find an adult. Okay, say stop it. Get a friend and be a friend to the victim. Distract or redirect the attention away from the bully. Um, Humour sometimes works. So they're some of the things that you've come up with. These are going to flash up in, in, in a minute. Pause the video, have a look at them. See if there's any of these you've tried um, along the way. All right, the next thing I want you to have a look at, we've got two surveys that have been out there. You've had a bit of a look at the student survey that's come back in the data. Those two graphs are going to come up on your screen again very shortly. This is information from you guys about what you want to know more information about on the on the different types of bullying um, that we can have out there. Remember, verbal, physical, etc. And the second two 
The second two graphs are from parents. We had about 80 parents um, supply information to us across the school about what they want to know more about in the different types of bullying, where it's cyberbullying, social bullying, psychological bullying, verbal or physical bullying. Have a look at the two different sets of graphs. There's two, two from students, two from parents. See if you can see any similarities between what you guys want to know more about and what the parents on the other hand want to know more about. And are there any difference, differences between what you want to know and what the parents want to know? So have a look at the two sets of graphs and have that discussion about similarities and differences and I'll be back in a bit. Pause the video. Okay, hopefully you um, will have a great time doing the acrostic poem and I'll get some up to me it's for my notice boards and some up in the classroom. And hopefully you're able to see the similarities and differences between the parent survey and the student survey around bullying. Now some quick reminders. Firstly, stations. Remember, boys and girls, station one and two is really take them as a warning. Okay, that your behaviour is not good enough. We've seen a steep increase in the last few weeks of station threes and people refusing to do station threes. Now if you get a station three, it's a buddy class. If you um and ah and carry on like a rubber chook and don't want to go, then you're most likely going to get a station four, which means two days detention. There will be no discussion with me about that. You will just get those two days. There are other ways you can get station fours other than refusing to do your station three. You could get two station threes in one day. That will get you a station four instantly. You could also get a station four by getting station three on Monday, station three on Tuesday, station three on Wednesday, which really isn't good enough. Remember boys and girls, we're supposed to be seeing how low we can go and keeping our classrooms station three free zones. If we can do that, there'll be a lot more learning in the classroom happening. The teacher won't be annoyed with people, they'll be much happier and you'll have a much better time in your classroom. So make a big effort this week. Keep your classrooms station three free zones. Out of bounds, boys and girls. Unless you're going to the tuck shop, when tuck shop is on, the front of the school is out of bounds, as is playing around the toilets, the hall, the uh, library. If you've got no hat on, you're in the CPA, eating, reading, drawing or chatting. If you've got a hat on, get down on the oval, get down on the playgrounds. The weather's beautiful. Have a great time out there in the sun before summer comes and it gets hotter out in, it, in the sunshine. The wows, they're very full at the moment, but keep that money coming in and I'll put you down for a future session of dance or karate or hula hooping, so keep those coming in. Um, eating in your classrooms, very shortly on my screen there'll be some protocols um, coming up around things you need to do with eating in your classroom. Have a bit of a read through these ones, guys. You might want to pause the video, have a bit of a read of these. The teachers have got these as well, just so you understand that the rubbish needs to go in the bin. The bin needs to have a bin liner in it. And boys and girls, it's your job. It's part of your classroom jobs to empty that bin every day at second break. That can be someone's job, I think, in each classroom. Um, there is a newsletter coming home to your parents. It's called the SELT or CELT newsletter, Social Emotional Learning Team newsletter. This is for your parents so that they can get a bit of an update on what's going on with um, our rewards, um, our wows, etc. around the school, um, our green and red zones, our King Roy cash. There's lots of information there for your parents, so make sure you give it to them. Um, and this week's video, it's actually an ad. Um, if you remember back to my, a few months ago, we had the Evian Water ad with the dancing babies. Well, this one's just as clever. It's actually an ad for Marmite. And Marmite is, uh, the best way I can describe it, is the English version of Vegemite. So have a look at it. I think it's very, very clever. Enjoy it. Stay in bounds this week, boys and girls. Keep away from those Station 3s, and I'll see you guys out on the playground. Have a great week. It's an early start for the rescue team as they visit a house in West London. Neighbours reckon they're a little bit testy. We've had a couple of reports of neglect at this address. All we're going to do is have a little look around your cupboards. This is a bit of an Oh, stuck right at the back. Who knows how long that's been in here. The team's only option is to remove the stricken jar. Right. Get him back, clean him up. Soon, a more delicate case is called in. I wonder if I could come in and have a little chat. I think you might know what it's about. Yeah. As the team have come to learn, offenders can be from all walks of life. I promise he will go to a, to a good home. I'm sorry. Oh. Across town, Lucy is dealing with a very different call. I don't know why you're here, to be honest with you. It doesn't take long before new recruit Callum Howe finds another jar in a shocking state. Oh, no. What's um, the matter? 
this baby one. Okay, don't panic. It's not been used in months. All right. Lid stuck. All right, gently, gently. Oh, I can, I can change. For those new to the job, such scenes of neglect can be traumatic. A little jar. I've not, I've not seen one that small before. After an emotional day, the team drop off the rescue jars at the rehoming centre. Really love this one. Okay. Yeah. Where a proud family welcomes their new addition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it, hate it, just don't forget it.